how do I live out my faith? There's some choices to be made. There's two requirements. I can assure you there'll be others, but two are fundamental. It will will require of us intentionality. We'll have to do it purposefully, not accidentally. If you've lived with a spiritual equation that starts like this, I'm open to whatever God has for me. I'll just do whatever he wants me to do. I'm open to just anything, just whatever God would say you'll more than likely miss the kingdom of God. My Bible says that unless you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you won't be saved. So it isn't just what God would have for you. It has a great deal to do with what you would have. We have to do it on purpose, folks. We've been passive for too long. God gave you a free will. And then he invited you to exercise that in pursuit of him. So intentionality and courage, it will move you beyond comfort. Again, not to be belligerent or angry or hostile. Hostile. There's an implementation plan. I'll do this quickly. There's some personal choices, and I think the key there is really obedience. If you'll just practice obedience to the truth that you know, God will give you more. If it, why do you imagine God would give you any greater insight or understanding if you're disobedient to the truth that you currently know? It makes no sense to me. Romans 10, I quoted just a moment ago. Matthew 28 says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I know it's not chic any longer to be evangelical. I don't mean by affiliation, I mean by behavior. To share your faith with other people. Whether it's chic or not, it's a biblical assignment. There's a second component of living out your faith that has to do with your family. I think the key word for that is leadership. You have to decide that you intend to influence your family for the kingdom of God. It isn't really about you. If you've imagined that your family's purpose is to make you happy and make you feel fulfilled and make you feel content, to make up for what you wished you had had in a different season of your life, I think you've misunderstood the assignment. You're to help those in your family. It's not about making friends of your children. They need parents. It's giving them life experiences, we're told. And I'm for that. But if we give them life experiences and we don't give them God experience, we've put them on a destructive path. I don't believe it has to be either or. It can be both and. But you don't want to lead with the life experience and diminish the God experience. You don't want to make greater sacrifices, spend more money, teach them that the great things to be looked forward to and celebrated are the life experiences, but you have to endure the God experiences. That's a messed up training pattern. Which means you'll have to believe it in yourself. They'll have to see your joy and your enthusiasm and your anticipation and your sacrifices directed towards the things of God in order for them to attach value to that. I look forward to seeing a generation of young people who give their lives to serving the Lord because their parents thought those children serving the Lord would be the highest and best use of their lives. We've drifted a long way away from that. And then the third arena is the sphere of influence that God has given you. There are people who care about what you think and what you believe and how you see the world. And I think the key word there is passion. They'll need to feel your enthusiasm for a biblical worldview. If you're a UT fan, your friends know that. If you're an Alabama fan, they probably know that too. Let somebody else win a national championship once in a while. (laughs) Sharing is a biblical principle. (laughs) The things you're passionate about, the people that know you understand very well, whatever it is. That's not evil or wrong, but your passion for the kingdom of God, the creator of all things, your Lord and Savior, Jesus of Nazareth, I would submit should be the highest expression of enthusiasm in your life. And we've drifted from that. Like we're kind of embarrassed about that and shy about that. And and we've got to reevaluate that. We've got some changes to make. How do we live out my faith? How do we become heroic in the context of our faith? It's not complicated. It's not beyond us. We've got to express the intent and then have the courage to walk it out. It's 4th of July. We can celebrate today. 
and enjoy the day because of the sacrifices that have preceded us. The question is, what is coming? And I assure you, it has to do with your faith and your courage more than it does politicians or political parties. It's not about the media or the social media. It's about the people of God and our faith and our courage. God help us. Hey, this is Pastor Allen. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like it, and most importantly, share it with your friends. If you wanna be notified when there's new content and we post new material, if you'll just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, you'll get the notification. Most of all, I pray God blesses you as you continue on your spiritual journey and open your heart to the Lord. God bless.